Hey, Joe, let's bring in Robin Hayes, the CEO of JetBlue Airlines, joining us uh, from New York. Robin, let's talk about this enhanced offer. Uh, walk me through the thinking here of raising the reverse breakup fee up to $350 million and providing an immediate $1.50 per share dividend if the deal is approved ultimately between uh, Spirit and JetBlue. Yeah, good morning, Phil. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, we've, uh, in, uh, we've enhanced the uh, offer today, really reinforcing the uh, superior uh, nature of offer. We spent the last few weeks talking to uh, many spirit, spirit shareholders, and uh, you know, we believe the issue. We believe what we've done today uh, addresses much of the feedback that we uh, we received, and we expect a very favorable response from uh, from spirit shareholders. You know, money is great, Robin, but the main question remains whether or not you can get the deal across the finish line with regulators. And obviously, the enhanced breakup fee uh, addresses some of that question in terms of some protection for spirit shareholders. Um, but do you honestly believe still that you can get this across the finish line? Uh, absolutely, Phil. I've been in this industry 31 uh, years. We did a lot of work on this uh, before we uh, made the uh, offer to uh, uh, spirit. It's something that... Uh, you know, when we look at uh, the really the, the basis of our regulatory argument, and, and I think as time has gone on, more and more people are understanding this and saying, yes, this can, this can get done. First of all, the JetBlue effect. What this is, when JetBlue flies into a market, uh, the legacy fares, which make up 80% of the market, they match us. Um, and so uh, low fares are much more prevalent, and they, they happen across uh, much more the market than they do uh, when an ultra low cost carrier flies on a route, because for the most part, they're not, not matched. We see that in data. The JetBlue effect is more than three times effective at lowering fares than an ultra low cost carrier effect. Secondly, Phil, we've made unprecedented divestiture commitments. We know what it takes to get this deal done. We're going to divest every spirit slot and gate uh, in the four Northeast airports to uh, enable ultra low cost carrier competition. Uh, to continue to uh, thrive. Uh, so really, it's going to be where it was uh, before this transaction. And even though probably we didn't need to, we made a divested commitment in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, even in Fort Lauderdale, though, a combined JetBlue spirit uh, presence um, is still would still be smaller than over 22 airports in the country where you have a, a larger airline. So you know, both of those things are very important to uh, closing the regulatory process. And also, let's not forget, JetBlue is renowned for low fares and great service. 50% of JetBlue customers today are buying uh, purely uh, on price. And so all of those uh, elements together means that this is the most compelling solution to help keep this industry competitive, to help keep these large four legacy airlines in check and keep consumers benefiting from low fares. And so we have a lot of conviction uh, we can get this done. Robin, is this the final offer? And I say that from this standpoint. You know that Spirit and Frontier are likely going to talk. Frontier likely may come back to them later today, if not the next couple of days before the Friday vote, and say, fine, we'll increase our reverse breakup fee. Do you sense that you probably will have to come up with at least one more enhanced, enhanced bid before Friday? Well, Phil, I mean, the first thing I expect happen is we need the Spirit board to seriously consider our offer. Uh, this has been a really um, uh, awful process from a corporate governance uh, uh, point of view. We clearly have a superior uh, proposal. We've continued to address the concerns that spirit shareholders have uh, raised with us. So I expect them to give very careful consideration uh, to this uh, offer. They have large institutional shareholders who have questions and concerns, I'm sure, about some of the, some of the ways this process has uh, uh, gone through. So we've got an offer on the table today. We think it's a far superior offer. We want the board to uh, consider the offer and hopefully come back to us, recognize the superior nature of the proposal and properly engage with us. And uh, let's close the deal and create this new, great, uh, high quality, low fare national challenger uh, to keep the large legacy airlines in check. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.